partners and friends. I know that you are viewing us this morning from YouTube. Maybe you're viewing us from Facebook or maybe even Instagram. And you come in on, on Sunday mornings. You watch us. You enjoy the sermon. You enjoy our praise and worship. And you're wondering how you can connect with us more throughout the week. Well, guess what? We have that opportunity for you. Not only are we on, back on, on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. You can join us Monday through Friday at 6.15 a.m. and at 12.15 p.m. where we have our daily prayer calls. 6.15 a.m. is our early morning. Early in the morning will I seek him. And then at 12.15, for those of you that are having break at lunch, just 15 minutes of power. On Saturdays, oh my goodness, we have one hour of a war call where we go before the Lord and we are warring for your deliverance, for your breakthrough, and for your healing. So if you want to connect with Impact Church DFW every day of the week, just call in to 385 799 9228. That is 385-799-9228. And you can be a part of the greater impact community. God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Impact Church Virtual Worship Service. We are so honored to have you here on today. I am Minister Becky Collier Hagler, and I have with me today Minister Sharon Gatson. And we are so honored to be here to uh, just open up this service uh, for you on this morning. Now, if you uh, have Facebook or or YouTube, or Instagram, any of these uh, social medias, we want you to get on online today and share and, and, and connect with us, or write comments, whatever you want to do. We want you to enjoy yourself in the Lord, even though you may be virtual. And you can join us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I don't know if we can do Snapchat yet, but we want you to get on everything that you can to find us to have worship with us on today. Hallelujah. Now, you know, Sharon, there's something coming up that I don't know if a lot of people know about. What is that, Becky? The Women of Distinction and the MOI are joining together in, separate, in September. MOI, oh! The men of impact? Yes, and the women of distinction. And the women of distinction. And we are going to do a karaoke night. Oh, impact got talent. Impact, impact got impact talent. talent, yes. And so we're asking all of you that think you can sing, know you can sing, wish you could sing, want to sing. We want you to join with us in the month of September. We will be getting more information out to you for this event but we want you to come and enjoy yourself and and, and 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 we can do different genres of music. So it doesn't have to be just basic gospel, but you can do a little bit of blues, maybe a little bit of country and western. Don't little, forget spoken word now. Spoken, oh yeah. Spoken word. Spoken word would be awesome. Yes, yes. So please join us, because uh, we will get more information to you about that but we are going to have a lot of fun. And can you tell some of the other things that we do at the well, church? Well, you know, um, on Wednesday nights, we have our virtual Bible study. Yes. And it is also on Facebook and YouTube. And you can come in at seven o'clock p.m. Wednesday night, every Wednesday night, and be able to hear the word of God from our pastor or whatever minister leader he has placed to be able to teach that night. Yes. So once again, Sign in to YouTube, 
or uh, Facebook and put in the comment section where you are watching us from and please share and like, share and like. Amen. Well, Sharon, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into the word of God through prayer right yes, now. Yes. And I'm just going to ask each and every one of you to join in prayer with me on today as we go before the Lord yes. and just bombard heaven for the needs that we have, not only in our country, but in our church. Yes. Amen. Amen. Won't you join me? Amen. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just lift up every situation, Father God, that our world is going through, through the diseases, through the viruses, through war, through through inflation, Lord, through hunger, whatever it is that many of your people are facing right now. And we are asking you to meet every need. Father, uh, we know that our children have gone back to school, and Lord, I'm sure that many of them are still afraid God, to be in the classroom. But God, I'm asking you to ease their minds. Father God, help them to understand. Help them to know. Let them know that you have their backs, that you are going to protect them, Lord. Father God, I pray for our church. Lord God, as we are moving forward, Father God, in, into our new building, Lord God, we're just asking you, Father, that all will go well. Everything we need, Father God, that it will be met. All of the situations, Father God, that we might have to go through, Lord God, that you will be there, Lord, to just let this thing push through, Father. We glorify you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you do, oh God. And we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we do pray. And we say amen, amen, amen. and amen. So you know what, Sharon? I think it's time. And what do we say at Impact? Have church. Let's have go. Have the church. church. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord, Impact. Holy is our God. We call him faithful. We lift his name this morning. We lift your name. Come on, call his name, Father Yahweh. You're so faithful, Lord. Hey, hey. You're worthy, Jesus. So it says, I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. Oh, I call you holy, and your name is holy, holy you are, and holy you be, yeah. I call you, your name is holy, you are so holy, come on, raise this hand. Awesome. 
you, Impact partners and friends, for your generous support of God's work at Impact Church. Because of your faithful generosity, our church is able to touch the lives of our family and community in meaningful and impactful ways, including sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have three ways for you to continue to support the Impact Ministry. You can visit icdfw.org to give online or text ICDFW to 77977 to give by text. And lastly, you can mail your gift to our new post office box. Whichever way you choose to give, we are thankful for your generosity. It's because you choose to give cheerfully and generously that Impact is able to continuously accomplish our mission of transforming lives and transforming a generation. Well, it is time, Sharon, for us to go into our congregational prayer. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to ask all of you out there who are watching us virtually to join in with us. We are so just looking forward to God doing something mighty on today in your life. So let us pray. Father God, we just thank you right now. We thank you, Lord God, for how our praise team just led us into a a time of great worship, oh God. And so I know, Father God, that through that we are feeling your presence and your anointing right now. And Lord, I thank you, Father God, for everything that you are doing for our church, Father God. Lord God, as, as, as we move on into a new uh, level of of praise and worship and, and time of the word, Father God, I'm asking you now, Lord, that you will bring in more and more people each week, oh God, to be a part of Impact Church. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for each and every um, minister, each and every leader, each and every ministry that we have in this church. Father God, we give you glory and honor and praise. Lord, we thank you that as we go further into this service, oh God, that you will bless your preach word. Father God, let it be an on-time word. Let it be a fire word. Let it be a word that changes us, that quickens us, oh God. Lord, we thank you right now that we prepare ourselves to receive that word that is coming today from our pastor. And so, Father, we glorify you now. We magnify your name, and we will forever give you the glory. In Jesus' name, we do pray. And we say amen, 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 and amen. So now we're going to hear another great song from our praise and worship team. Our pastor will be coming up. And so we're just going to continue to have some what? Church! We're going to continue to have some church. God bless you and have a great, great day. So Father, our hands are raised. Our hearts are raised in your presence. Come on, open your mouth and create an altar in your homes. Come on, let's do it together. Come on, create a space where God can dwell. Father, we raise our hands in adoration to you. We raise our voices in praise to you. Hey, hey, hey. We raise it, we raise it, we raise it, we raise it. Hey, hey, hey. We lift your name, Lord. Yes, yes. We lift your name.
can't say. I know life has, life has a way of making you feel pressured, but come on, lift him, lift him, lift him. He said, if I be lifted up, come on, I'll draw all men unto me. Can I propose to you that there is nothing too hard? Good morning, good morning, Impact Church. First, I want to give honor to God, give honor to our pastor, Pastor Kay, give honor to the first family, to all the saints and friends. I am so honored and delighted to have been chosen to bring forth the word up on today. Uh, before we get into, let's go to the Father. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you are. God, we thank you, Father God, because you're holy, you're wonderful, you're righteous. God, you're excellent in all your ways. God, thank you for watching over us all night, God, keeping us safe and unharmed. Allow us, God, to be awakened, oh God, in our right mind, God, in our mind on you. Father God, forgive us, Father God, of every sin that we have committed unto you knowingly and unknowingly, oh God. God, forgive us, Father God, for those unconscious sins, Father God. God, we, God, we ask God that you just uh, come into this service, Father God. God, speak to me, speak through me, oh God. Hide me behind the cross, oh God. God, that I may bring forth the word, God. God, that will be pleasing and acceptable to your sight. God, we thank you right now for what you're getting ready to do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you this morning. I am be reading from the book of John. Second chapter, verses 1 through 10. In the NIV version. And the Bible reads, On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mothers were there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus said. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servant who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best to now. Just for a little while, I just want to share with you, God had placed it on my heart in this season. And the title for this is An Encounter with Jesus, Something Changed. An Encounter with Jesus, Something Changed. To give some context in the backdrop of this setting, 
The Gospel of John portrays Jesus in his deity as the Son of God. John's purpose is crystal clear, to set the Christ deity in order to spark believing faith to all. But what does turning water into wine symbolize? You know, as Eve was the agent whereby mankind was brought into mortality, Mary was the means by which the pre-mortal, spiritual, and divine word became the earthly Jesus. The water turned into wine. The eternal entering mortality, Jehovah turned into Jesus. This story begins abruptly with the notice that a wedding took place. We know nothing of the circumstances of the wedding or the identity of the groom and the bride, only that the mother of Jesus was there. His mother's presence provides a reason for the presence of Jesus and his disciples. This indicates that Jesus and his disciples wasn't counted for. Think about it. If, if people shows up at, a, at an event or a party, or in this case, a wedding that you have put together, you know, in, in the, putting together a wedding of some sort, every, every plate is accounted for. When extras come, then it throws everything off. But think about it. Some folks come that you had no idea who they were. But this set the stage for a brief exchange between Jesus and his mother and the ensuing miracle. In verse 3, it says, when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Now, this makes me believe that Mary, the mother of Jesus, must have been the wedding planner or someone in charge to see that everything goes according to plan. So the bride and the bridegroom won't face any embarrassment from their guests and surely not in front of the governor or the ruler, the master of the banquet. In verse 4 it says, woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. You know, as a, as a child, growing up in the early 60s and throughout the 70s, y'all know I'm an old cat. But, but, but in, in, in that time, and in, in, in even before, there was a certain cadence. There was a, a certain saying that when you call out mother's name, you call it with some respect on it. But here in verse 4, Jesus said, woman, woman, woman indicates some form of disrespect to us today. If I was to call my mama woman. Something else is going to take place, but 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 here, if you know, you you either going to say a uh, 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 mother or my dear or big mama, or you're going to answer ma'am. But in any other way of saying it, would will be some form of disrespect. But if I would have said anything other than mama, a uh, 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 something painful, something. Thing in, uh, 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 that, that would have came across me before I got the word out by saying woman, something painful would have came over me because saying woman to my mama and, and to express myself would have came across disrespectful. But in, in, in that time in the Greek, the language of it calling your mother woman wasn't a form of disrespect. But turning water into wine was the first recorded miracle or sign that Jesus performed in the scripture. And these signs or miracles in the book of John teach us something about Jesus' identity. In the gospel of John, Jesus is said to have performed seven miraculous signs that characterize his ministry from changing water into wine at the start of his ministry to raising Lazarus from the dead at the end. The definition of 
to turn. The turn means to rotate. Turn means to change or being transformed. Notice when we give ourselves to the Lord, we are transformed from the old to the new. A new creation of, of old things have passed away and all things become new. The water was something of old. But some people, some people have that I ain't going to change spirit. But if you have a real encounter with God, something got to change. Encounter, encounter, encounter means an unexpected or casual meeting with someone or something. In verse 5, his mother said to the servant, do whatever he tells you. Mary didn't know what Jesus was going to do, but she expected him to do something. You know, as, as, as parents, we, we look for great things from our children. You know, I cannot help but wonder what Mary had in mind for Jesus to do. Did she want Jesus to go to the market and pick up something or send one of his bar to disciples to, to, to the store to get some, say, brother, bring some back. Mary didn't know what Jesus was going to do, but she expected him to do something. And by her expecting Jesus to do something, that activated her faith. You know, in, 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 in this season, in this time during COVID, it's not post COVID, we still in it, but people are in such a strain and struggle because of job losses and the business is suffering and food is on the rise, gas is on the rise and, and making it hard to make any meat. You ever had that moment when 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 rent was due and you didn't know you uh, uh, you know, something, it was going to be hard for you. It was going to be tight. I, I, I've been there. I'm, I'm just saying what, what, what I've been through when, when you look up and say, mm, I'm short. And, and then you began to pray and, 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 and going to the Lord and, and asking God, God, I don't, I don't know what you're going to do, but I know you going to do Something I mean, when when you go to the car and your and your gas light on, if you're like me, I ride with the gas light blinking because it gives me the mileage to go on. But in this time, I remember that my gas light just blinking. I said, Lord, I I I gotta get to where I'm going, but I'm gonna trust you. Then. And as I began to walk to the car, there you see. $10 on the ground. Ah, uh, but it, when you expect God to do something, something changes. And as I went and worried about, not worried, but knowing that, Lord, uh, you know, rent due. You know, we got two days and we look up and you get a phone call or you get something in the mail that something that has been returned back to you, a check that you didn't even know that was coming or you have gotten your income tax check and, and there you go, rent paid because you expected God to do something and, and by your expectation, it increases your faith. But here in the text, Jesus said to the servant, fill the jaws, fill the jaws. So they fill them to the brim. And out of obedience, the servants did just that. You know, when God calls, he uses what's available. He uses who is available. My question to you, are you, are you available? The stone jars were for cleansing and not for drinking. Strict Jewish hygiene practices were in place. So the moment any drinking water touched the stone jars, these vessels tainted the water, making it no longer suitable for drinking. You know, it's, it's highly probable that the water had changed to wine at this point. If not, surely the servant steeped into the Jewish tradition would have objected to serving tainted water. But something truly miraculous had happened and, and no objections were raised and Jesus' instructions were carried out. If you have an encounter with Jesus, here in, in verse 7, Jesus used what was available and he still works through any vessel. He still works through any person that surrenders all to his will, no matter how unworthy we may be. 
Change, change is the act or instance of making or becoming different. The Samaritan woman in, in John 4, the woman at the well, y'all know the story. She was isolated from the others and had to get water during the heat of the day because of who she was. She was a Samaritan. The Samaritan and the Jews didn't correlate. They didn't, they didn't come together. They, they separated. But, 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 but the woman at the well had an encounter with Jesus and, she, and Jesus began to tell her everything about her and she left and told everybody, come see a man that told me everything about me. She was changed in the moment. She left everything that she owned. She left the water jug. The, the water jug represents something that she had inherited something that was valuable to, to her and she left there. Sometimes when you have an encounter with Jesus, you got to leave some things that may be important to you. But here in the text, it said even a change had came over to Saul. On the road to Damascus, he had an encounter with the Lord and his name was changed to Paul and, and, and he was chosen by God to be the apostle to the Gentile. Moses, even the, at, the, at the burning bush, he had a glow of the glory of God. He was changed. Lazarus was told to get up out of the grave. There was change that taken place. Life have came into his body. When you have an encounter with the Lord, change happens. And when change happens, you no longer have a desire to do the things of old. When you have an encounter with Jesus, your prayer life increases. When you have an encounter with Jesus, something you have to, some something have to change. Even your circle have to change. When you have an encounter with Jesus, your excitement about the name of Jesus increases. You want to tell somebody about. Jesus, the Samaritan woman said, come and see a man that told me everything about me. Here in John 1, the, the next chapter over, verse 41, 32, it says that the first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which, which when translated is Peter. The first thing Andrew did when he found out Jesus was the Christ was to go tell his brother. Andrew went and got Peter and brought him to Jesus. Now, Andrew could have been scoffed, could have been cussed out by Peter, could have been rejected by Peter. If Peter would not believe Jesus was the Christ, yet Andrew took him to Jesus anyways, and I'm not sure he was glad he did. Here's the thing. You ever had somebody to come to you and want you to meet somebody? At the time, you ain't trying to meet nobody new. You ain't trying to find nobody. You ain't trying to do all of that. You know what? You know, whatever. But 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 they talk you into because they had such an excitement in their voice and say, man, come come meet old boy. Say, man, come come meet dude, man. Say, bro, come 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 meet the the Messiah, man. I, I tell you, he is what that is. But then you get into it. But 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 with that, knowing Jesus is. The only way to eternal life. My question, would you want to introduce Jesus to somebody? Would you want to introduce Jesus to a family member? Would you want to introduce Jesus to a co-worker? Would you want to introduce Jesus to your son, your daughter, your grandparent, even your parents? You know, and back in the day, and as I begin to close, in 1975, there was a great of all time singer. He was the goat of gospel music. And Walt Hawkins, one of the greats, but he had a song that was, that was called Change. I remember coming home from work one evening and it was raining, it was pouring down and I can barely see, but this song was playing. It was in rotation. And I have heard it a million times, have sung it in many choirs that I was singing in, but, but in this moment, it something resonated. 
I began to get into what was being said. I began to listen. And as the song was being played, the Holy Spirit arrested me. The Holy Spirit, I heard the voice of God say, if you want an encounter, if you want to, to, to feel the fullness of me, something got to change. But the song continued to say change. He changed my life and now I'm free. He washed away all my sins and he made me whole. He washed me white. As snow. A change, a change has to come over you. When a change come over you, you no longer have a desire to do the things you used to do. You, you no longer have a desire to cuss. You no longer have a desire to lie and fornicate. You no longer have a desire to be around bitterness. You no longer have a desire to be around unfruitful people. When you have an encounter with Jesus, change got to take place. Change come over you when you have an encounter with the Lord. And when you have an encounter with Jesus, it increases your prayer life. When you have an encounter with Jesus, you want to tell everybody that know somebody about Jesus. When you have an encounter with Jesus, you, you want to uh, 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 know the purpose that God has for you. A change, a change, a change, a change must take place. So as we close to have an encounter with the Lord, somebody right now who have been faced with many obstacles and been praying and not really understanding why I haven't gotten to that level, there is an encounter that needs to take place. There is a change have to take place in your life. See, we have to understand that some of the things that we are still doing can hinder our growth. We got to change. Even if you have to walk alone, change. Change. So I, I, I say this in all. That if you want to have an encounter, change must take place. God bless you. God bless you. I hope this word was a blessing to you as it was to me. And I pray that all who have heard it will yield to the Holy Spirit and want the change. You want the encounter with the Lord. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. Thank you, Impact Partners and Friends, for your generous support of God's work at Impact Church. Because of your faithful generosity, our church is able to touch the lives of our family and community in meaningful and impactful ways, including sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have three ways for you to continue to support the Impact Ministry. You can visit icdfw.org to give online or text ICDFW to 77977 to give by text. And lastly, you can mail your gift to our new post office box. Whichever way you choose to give, we are thankful for your generosity. It's because you choose to give cheerfully and generously that Impact is able to continuously accomplish our mission of transforming lives and transforming a generation. Thank you for joining us today for Impact Worship Online. You know, our outreach online is tagged life.love. What that means is that we want to transform your life with the love of God. We pray that you have felt that love today in the song, in the prayer, 
and in the word that has been delivered. I want for you to know that God is yet working miracles in our lives. We want to connect with you. So we're gonna ask you to go to our website at icdfw.org and click the connect button. When you do, you'll be able to share your testimonies, you'll be able to share your prayer requests, and certainly, if you've given your life to Jesus, you'll be able to share that as well. We wanna connect with you so that we can share the love of God that will transform your life. This is Pastor Kwesi Kamau, and we are Impact Church. We are anointed to make an impact. We don't just talk about it, we be about it. God bless you.